Hi guys, I'm back again with another practical Rhino tutorial. This time, I'll be taking you through from start to finish, explaining how I created this beast of a bezel set ring for a large oval rutilated quartz that I actually own. As well as showing how, I'll also be explaining why, and breaking down my decision making process along the way. In particular, focusing on how to create practical bezel settings for this heavy coloured stone. Now as this is quite an in-depth project, I've broken it down into four separate episodic parts, which will be released separately. Part 1, creating a virtual 3D representation of our actual gemstone. Part 2, making a practical bezel setting around it. Part 3, constructing a tapered, lofted shouldered ring, all without the use of a single rail sweep or profile. And finally, part 4, adding windows into the setting to reduce weight and improve the appearance. So let's get started with part one, creating the gemstone. And here's the stone we're working with, a rutilated quartz approximately 18 by 13. Now, as this is an oval, I take an image from the back of the stone so that I can see the shape of the girdle, and also from the front so that I can see the form and proportion of the crown and pavilion facets. Now, for other cuts of gemstones, you may need to take an additional side view in order to model them successfully. So I'm first going to begin by creating an ellipse in the top view with dimensions that match the height and width of our oval gemstone. So I'm going to go to ellipse from center, center of my ellipse, zero comma zero. And the end of first axis, I'm going to start with the height. Note that I've got ortho on to keep my line vertical. I'm going to type 18.1 and then slash two, as I'm drawing from the center outwards. So if I don't add the slash two, I'll end up with a height which is double 18.1. By adding the slash two, it divides that number by two for me. So I click, enter, and the width, which is 13.3, again, slash two, and enter. So we can see that if I measure this, we have 18.1 by 13.3. Now the next thing I want to do is import the top or back view photograph of the quartz to make sure that the proportions of my ellipse match the proportions of the actual stone's girdle. So to do that, I'm going to place the photograph of the gemstone that I took from the back into the top view of my Rhino model. To do that, I'm going to type picture in the command bar, find my back view photograph, and just for the moment, place it to the bottom right of my world center. Now this obviously is not one-to-one -one scale, so we have to scale this so it matches the same height and proportion of the physical stone. So to do that, I'm going to first try and find where the approximate center of the gemstone is. I like to do that by drawing a line from where I think the center is at the top, all the way down to the bottom. Again, note that I've got orthographic on to help keep my lines vertical. Now I'm going to draw a line from the mid of this line out to the left, until it hits the girdle of the stone on the left. Now in theory, if I found the center, this line when mirrored with the mirror command, about the end of the line here, should roughly meet the edge of my girdle, which it does pretty bang on. So now I can scale this image using these lines. So I'm going to select both the lines and the photograph and go transform scale 2D, snap to the top of the vertical line, the bottom of the vertical line, and type in our height, which is 18.1, and enter. So I actually wasn't far off with the imported scale there. So now I'm going to move this from the mid of those two lines, or the intersection, from here to 0, 0, which is the center of my world. Now, how closely does it match the line that I created earlier? So let's select that ellipse and uh, change the color actually of that layer so it's a contrast better against the black of the photograph. So it's currently my default layer. I'm going to change that to white swatch. There we go. So actually this, the cut and proportion of the stone are pretty much a perfect ellipse. So I'm happy to, uh, to use this as the basis for our girdle shape. So we don't need this anymore, nor do we need these two lines. So now that we know that our top uh, girdle uh, shape and proportion are accurate to our line, I'm going to go ahead and import a bog standard off the shelf diamond cut oval model. I'll uh, put a link 
to a download for this stone in the description of the video. Now obviously this isn't the right size, so we have to scale this to match our overall. Let's go back into the top view, and I'm going to go to Transform, Scale, 3D. Again, I've got Ortho and Project on, so that my snapping it will be vertically aligned in the z-axis. My base point is 0, 0.0, which happens to be the center of the gemstone. Scale factor of first reference point, I'm going to choose the left side of the girdle of the faceted stone, and then snap to the quad of my traced oval. Now, the height needs to be a little bit more, so I'm going to select the model, go back to transform, scale, but this time 1D, and go from the center of the model, so 0, 0, again, to the top of the imported stone, and then snap to the end of our oval line that we drew earlier. So, go back into perspective, we can see now that our imported stone matches the size and shape of our ellipse. Now, I know for a fact that this is a diamond cut ideal model, and the stone that I've got is not, it's a quartz. So the shape of the pavilion and the proportion of the pavilion to girdle the table is completely different. So what I'd like to do is now modify this pre-made gemstone and make it more closely match the form of our existing gemstone in three dimensions. So to do that, I'm going to go into the front view. Now let's change our view to ghosted. And I'm going to use the picture command again to place a photograph of the front view somewhere to the bottom right of my screen. Now this obviously isn't one to one, so we need to scale it with a two dimensional scale from one side of the girdle to the other with the width of our stone, which is 13.3 as we're looking at the stone from the front and we're looking at its width. Now I'm going to move this using the approximate point of the coolant of the stone here to the coolant of our imported diamond cut. And we can see straight away that our actual stone is much deeper than the standard ideal diamond cut and also has a differently proportioned girdle to table and girdle to coolant. So the pavilion is much deeper. So I want to edit my existing stone to more closely match the photograph. So before we do that, I'm just going to first move the girdle ellipse outline onto a different layer by selecting the curve, right clicking on my layer two, and then choosing change object layer. Now I can turn that layer off and it's hidden out of the way. And also it's a good idea to lock the background image so that I'm not in danger of clicking and selecting it inadvertently when we start to modify the existing stone. So to do that, I just click the uh, surface with the image on and type L-O-C-K lock in the command bar. And now that's locked into place. So the first stage in modifying this stone is to first remove the girdle so that I can separate the model into uh, table and crown facets and then pavilion. So I'm going to type in the command bar, extract SRF, which is the shortcut or the command for extract surface. Then it says select surfaces to extract. So I can drag a box left to right around the girdle facets. That will select them. Note that copy is no. Press enter and delete. So now I've got my gemstone in two halves. So I'm first going to um, move and scale the crown and table. So let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to move the table up using the gumball arrows to here. And then we can see that my girdle is a little bit higher than I currently have it. So we're going to transform scale 1D. You can note that I've got project selected. I'm going to choose the top of the table, the edge of the girdle here, zoom in, and then bringing my mouse up until I roughly hit the top of the girdle in the photograph behind. Now we're going to do the same with the pavilion, but this time we're going to start at the bottom, choose the top, and then scale upwards until we roughly hit the start of the girdle in the photograph. There we go. So now that we've got the proportion of uh, girdle to table and girdle to cool it correct, we need to fatten out the shape of the pavilion. And we're going to do that with a cage edit. So first select 
the pavilion. And in the command bar, I'm going to type cage edit. So cage edit onward. We're going to use the bounding box as our control object. So click bounding box. Coordinate system is world. So I just press enter. And I've got cage parameters of 444 4, 4, and 333. 3, 3. That's the standard default. That's fine, I think, for the a stone of the shape. Enter and then region to edit. I want global, which it already is, so enter again. Now I'm going to drag a box around the first row up from the bottom of the cage, like so. And then using the gumball arrow, I'm going to drag this down until I'm getting the bottom shape here to match. You can see it's starting to bend this into shape. And then to fill in the rest, I'm going to grab the next layer up again from left to right. Gumball arrow, drag down. And there we can see it pretty much matches the shape of the pavilion. So I'm going to press escape twice, delete the control object, which is the cage. And now if we look in 3D, we can see that we've got a much more realistically modeled uh, colored stone form. So we don't need the photograph anymore. So I'm going to unlock it by typing unlock in the command bar. That's unlocked. Now I can delete this before we move on. And the last thing to do with this is just to close up the girdle by going into the front view and using the dup edge command or duplicate edge, dragging a box from left to right around the bottom edge of the crown and top edge of the pavilion facets, like so. By going to perspective, you can see that it's highlighted all of those edges in one go. Press enter, with them still selected, press join. Now if I turn the uh, fastened model off, you can see those edges. And to connect them with the surface, we're just going to use the loft command, L-O-F-T. Ensure that my seam points are above each other. Enter, check the preview, everything looks okay. Okay again. Now, if I select that, turn um, this back on, choose the crown and table and the pavilion and press join. We should end up with one closed poly surface, which we do, that's great. So we don't need these curves anymore, they can go. And now we're done creating a custom non-standard gemstone. Thanks for watching the first part in this video tutorial series. Look out for part two, where we'll be creating the tapered bezel setting to fit around the stone that we've just created. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments section and I'll try my best to answer them. To see more content like this, please follow my page on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're considering inquiring about booking a bespoke online CAD lesson with me, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. See you next time.